is that your band house there? Do you guys, is that where you do all your creativity? This yes. is where we do our creativity. <laughs> Who did the drawings in the back? We kind of just said, uh, fuck it. Yeah, and just started drawing on the wall, on the walls. <laughs> God. So you've all been doing drawing. Yeah. We've all been doing drawing. <laughs> 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 this is George. George, everything that's like really good on here was George, who's our creative designer. Oh, it's awesome! I love it. Yeah, I mean, it's your place. If you want to draw on the wall, go ahead. So, how's the how's the air out there? I keep seeing these horrific pictures of like the orange sky. Is everything okay? So the Bay Area is like really, really orange and apocalyptic looking over here in LA. It's starting to look a little weird outside. But, oh, well, there's but some overcast, but nowhere near how it looks in the Bay Area. Yeah. Oh, so you guys live in LA now? Yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we moved. We moved to SoCal. Like we were living closer to San Diego um, all last year, and we just moved into this house here in Studio City. Yeah. Oh, I have some old friends that live in Studio City. I haven't been there in years. Mm-hmm. You like it? Yeah, it's really nice. Not bad. It's like not. Like we're in like a perfect location where you don't really feel like you're in the city, like in the heart of the city. Yeah. You're close enough to everything where if you need to be there, you can get there really, really quickly. <laughs> well, I suppose now that everybody's staying home, but man, I, I've been in some horrific traffic jams in that place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you guys don't have to commute. You do everything in your, in your, uh, in your house there working. You know, I get the perception that you guys work 24 hours a day. And you do nothing but music and videos and <laughs> merch. Is that is that accurate? That's more accurate for Dom than than the rest of us. <laughs> Dom is a crazy wild person. He's not really human. <laughs> He's a wild. Man. He's a <laughs> But but like we we have that opportunity here and and like we I don't know since quarantine hit we kind of like been on and off. But Dom is very consistent with how how much time he spends on music. Yeah, so he's got to say, let's make a video, you lazy, lazy people. Come on. That's, that's George. Yeah. He's not here at the moment. Dom, Dom's more like, uh, okay, I got all the staring over you as you record, and if you get it wrong, you punch it <laughs> in the back of the head. All right, so I got that all mixed up. George is the video guy. I watched the video interview, and George wasn't there either. So yeah, he's, he's, a, where uh, is this guy? He's, 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 oh, he's, he's with his girlfriend. Oh, okay. Well, priorities. You guys are uniquely qualified to be a quarantine band, though, because it seems like you've spent every waking moment with each other for years now, huh? Yeah, it's been about a year of us seeing each other every single day. Well, we were seeing each other god damn near every day before <laughs> that, too. Uh, we were just always hang out, whether it was like to smoke, play basketball. So when we moved together, it was like, oh, we're, why does this feel so normal? <laughs> <laughs> like we, we we became friends like in high school, just like like you said, just hanging out, playing basketball. And once we all started like really taking it serious with the music, um, we would take these trips to my family vacation house in um, by Yosemite, and we would spend oh. like a week, two weeks there at a time. And like the productivity level that we had like during those trips were like just through the roof compared to like what we like us trying to meet with each other in San Jose. And we just like that became the goal is like just to get us all in the house so we can work whenever we yeah. want to. Yeah, Yosemite is beautiful. So we're what kind of our own bubble, NBA bubble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. So what were you guys like in high school when you weren't making music? How would your classmates describe you? Oh, they're those guys. How would they describe you? I played basketball too in high school. So either you knew me for music or you knew me for basketball, but you didn't really know me because I wouldn't go out of my way to talk to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Isaac, Isaac, Isaac moved to our high school like already making music and that's really what inspired the rest of us so when he be- when we became friends with him it kind of like we all just really got inspired to start doing it but i don't know what people refer to us as a lot of the noise. stupid idiots the stupid crowd. idiots that yeah. <laughs> play basketball and smoke the, the, now they're texting they're texting you all the time going hey go to hang out right <laughs> yep yeah i knew it 
I knew it. <laughs> well, I like the way you guys set this up because it's it, it sort of even though your music itself obviously doesn't remind me of punk rock, but your 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 aesthetic and the way that you have organized yourselves reminds me of like an old school punk rock band where you do everything yourself. You do your merch, you make your own music. It's all in house. I, I don't know if you guys have ever thought of that. Are there any artists, not so much maybe from a musical standpoint, but from how they do their business that you look at them and you go, yeah, that's, that's a great idea. That's, that's what we aspire to. Do you, can you think of any? Uh, yeah. Like, just in terms of the in-house everything keeping everything within like not having to outsource for much there was like brockhampton russ russ kendrick lamar yeah he had um what's his name soundwave oh, sound yeah there's like a lot of great artists keep the same teams same team around and really like we took that mentality because like it was just us, especially like in the beginning, yeah. like before, like things started to really move with, especially with Mariposa. We didn't like, have we didn't have the budget to to work on, or to get other people to work on our stuff. So like going into the project, we were basically like, okay, everything that needs to be done, we'll we'll be able to do it within these five people. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and now you're at the point where people want to advance you money to, to do stuff. And what you should do, uh, there's this band in Seattle, you probably never heard of them because it was years ago. They're called Mud Honey. That's a punk rock band. And they got advanced $20,000 once to make a, a song for a movie soundtrack. And they made the song for $800 and pocketed the rest. Wow. See, that's, that's how you do it. That's how Let's you do say it. Advanced, yeah, don't get into debt with them. But you know, you don't. It, you could you could still keep the same budget because your your work is already high quality, and, and people are going to be throwing piles of money at you. <laughs> you got to be smart. That's how you work the system, man. Yeah, definitely. I like that. And the record company has just disconnected us. No, but congratulations, really. I think it's <laughs> an, it's an inspiring story what you guys have done and done it all yourself, and that's really today in the music business things are tight and that's the way you got to do it you got to figure it out you got to be as creative with your business as you are with your music if you do that now the the weird thing for you guys is you probably like to be touring right now right it's like good and bad because the tour we had planned for this year uh was like a 10 to 12 city like in just north america um but uh now like since we've grown over the quarantine, next year is like already looking at 50 plus shows. Like There you go. Like around the world, yeah. So it's like, it's good and bad because like, good because like we've grown a lot and- Going from like five, 400K monthly listeners to 9 million on Spotify just this year. Just this year. So it's like, it's good because of like the growth and the success we've had and like the, the amount of touring we're gonna be doing next year. But something about, like this year that we were going to be doing like the smaller size rooms and stuff and like those intimate shows were like a little bit exciting but i think it's gonna be more exciting next year you sound a little intimidated when you think about it is it something about it kind of freaking you out no oh, yeah the fuck? No. <laughs> Dom, Dom, yeah no we were, we were like rehearsing for this for a tour for weeks before like everything got canceled so like our confidence levels were going up and like that's the part like since we started um making music and since peace you rascals like early 2018 we never did a single show like to this day so it's like just kind of building up like we we just want to get out there and like that energy is the energy that we've been missing it's just been us like making music in a house for years and like this year like with the quarantine is like the first time we really get to like speak and talk to the fans because there's like a lot of zoom calls and all these like different types of interviews so yeah. like that's pretty cool but that live energy is something that has been missing with our group since the beginning that's weird to think about because it, it, you can rehearse all you want it's kind of like being an athlete and you uh -huh. scrimmage you scrimmage through nfl starts tonight they haven't had any preseason games and now they're going to go out there and play for real and it's like you can't 
replicate that until you do it. So you just got to yeah. go out there and do it. Have you been working on the live show a lot? Uh, recently, not, nah, but yeah, once, once like the tour got canceled, we completely stopped rehearsing and we went straight into like, EP like mode. taking, yeah, EP, EP mode. Music. But prior, prior to the quarantine, we were like rehearsing for like three months straight, like weeks at a time. Yeah. So it kind of sucks that we did all that practice, but it was also good just to get that experience. Yeah. And now we'll have to like revisit the whole track list and probably extend the set because we're going to be playing longer runs. Yeah. yeah, longer sets and we're going to have a lot more music out by the time yeah. the touring starts. Yeah. yeah. Are you going to have like a light show and explosions and stuff? Yeah. Yes. You should have that. I'll be above. It depends on the city. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Well, this, you know, I'm, I'm old as hell, so I, I don't spend time on TikTok, but for the first time in my life, I went on there today because, you know, you guys certainly have at least a part of TikTok to thank for getting your music out there. Yeah. And it's, it was hundreds of clips of people interpreting Mariposa in any number of ways. And most of them, they were just... I think your number's a little low there, Mister. No, well, I didn't. I I didn't keep going. <laughs> there's, I mean, there was more there. But what I saw, there's like how many point, are there? It was like one point six million. Yes, I looked at one point six million <laughs> clips. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I went through, and then it was time to do the interview because I got to yeah. go. Away. <laughs> My daughter's on TikTok. She just mostly watches it. I don't think she even makes videos, but it's mostly mm. people lip syncing and dancing. But I saw somebody making a salad to the song. <laughs> somebody appeared to be shopping at Target for junk food. And uh, somebody was teaching their little puppy how to skateboard. And it was all to your song. <laughs> Did, do you, it, it's got to be a little surreal to see people. And they're from all over the world taking this song and interpreting it in their own way and making it their own. Do you yeah. think about that very much? We do. Like, yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Those it's are a lot of different thing. activities. It is fun. And like, it's great during the quarantine to see like, like that was something that helped like bring, like even though we couldn't do shows and like interact with the fans, like seeing people make TikToks and get creative, like especially during quarantine when you have nothing else to do. Like it's cool to see people occupying their time with that. Yeah, yeah. including making a healthy salad to yourself. You know, yeah. it, it did look good. It's good to hear too. <laughs> well, what I like about that song is it to me anyway, it's very Beatle esque. Is that uh, was that something yeah. that came to mind when well, you were making it? For me, one of my biggest inspirations is the Beatles. So yeah. like, whenever I like make a song, like naturally I just uh, go off of like their chord progressions and like just like the vibe that they were going for yeah well they were pretty good at that <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite beatles record or song uh something yeah oh, that's a beautiful song yeah, yeah i love that well well done well done lads and you have an ep <laughs> when's your ep coming next uh, year top of next year top of spring i think yeah like february march ish you know I'm not too sure, but That's it's the thing with, we just turned it in like last week. You turned in your homework. Yes. yes. So that's the frustrating thing though. Once you get hooked into these companies, they have, well, we can't put it out for a year. Like, well, why? Why can't we just put it out? Oh, no, we got to set us, it up. Right? Yeah. For us, it's just, we'd rather be like ahead. So we're not like, like stressing whether, over what the next song is. Like whether we were signed right now or we weren't, the plan was always wow. release release singles. This is like the, if, I don't know if you ever heard of the artist Russ, but um, this is like the way he came up was just like release singles until you're at that point where you have a fan base big enough to like, once you release the album, it can get the support and appreciation it deserves. And that's like the whole game plan with us is just release singles until we build that fan base. And then luckily things this year have been going so well that I think, you know, it's finally time. Yeah. So uh, does it, you mentioned the word album, does it matter to you to ult ultimately have a full length album? Because I keep hearing that no one cares about albums anymore, which I, I don't think is true. I love them. Yeah, no, no I, I, I love albums. We, yeah. we, I love the idea of like the short track list albums, like yeah, eight song albums, like 
I appreciate those more because I feel like the artist puts more work into each song instead of like throwing like 15 songs on one album. Yeah. yeah. And like the thing about albums, like everyone still appreciates albums and everyone still like, yeah, like everyone appreciates and loves albums and they usually people like albums more than just like, like singles coming out. But um, it's like, when you when you don't have an established fan base yet, like people's attention spans are short, and you yeah. want to like you want to keep releasing just to keep that content out there and to keep people coming back until they're like solidified fans. So you don't have to like keep releasing. And that's that's the goal for us is just to yeah. like get to that point where we become album artists instead of like yeah. having to drop make a couple classic albums and you go down in history. Yeah, so well, that you guys have got the whole. The whole thing figured out already. <laughs> just, just wait for the EP. I feel like you're, gonna, what, oh, yeah. you're gonna love the EP. That's, That's what, what my, dad, my dad be saying that to me. He'd be like, you just say things and it happens. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, you're right. he, he should listen to you then. <laughs> yeah, he, he does. He does. does. <laughs> my dad yeah. listens to me just, I think, as much as any dad listens to any son. <laughs> well, it, it sounds to me like you've had very supportive parents. I know there was a shed out back that you guys worked in when you were when you were younger and living up in the Bay Area and all that. So they've always been a little supportive, huh? Yeah, it, it was kind of like always supportive from a distance because me personally, I didn't want to present like my plans to really go all out and move away with the music stuff until results started showing up. My last semester of college, the whole semester, I knew it was my last one, like I was gonna drop out. And then I just told it to my parents. And then I was like, here's the numbers to back it up. This is what the numbers are gonna be six <laughs> These are what the numbers are gonna be a year from now. So I think it's in everyone's best interest for me to get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> Where, where'd you go to school? Uh, San Jose State. Yeah? How yeah. far did you get? Uh, well, I did a, I did a couple years in engineering and then I was like, I literally can't balance this in music right. because it's too time consuming. So I switched to advertising, which was like easy. Yeah. And I did that for like uh, a year and a half. And then I was like, right, I'm out of here. Uh, yeah, no, he did it a little bit better than I did it. Like, <laughs> I, my parents thought I was in school while the whole time I was just kind of like dropping classes and like the way the way my the way my school was set up is you had until like two weeks before the semester was over, you can drop the class without it <laughs> affecting your. <laughs> so like I would like like only care about maybe one class a semester and just be like a legit part time student, but like even like like half of a part time student, and my parents thought I was full time the whole time. So Oops. every time we would talk about school, it would just be like a very heated conversation <laughs> <laughs> i should say so what school allowed you to drop classes two weeks before the end it's uh no it was, it was um, Kansas, community, community college okay uh, well it's it's not for everybody you just gotta you just gotta know yourself you guys got oh all right well you guys you guys have a plan and uh i look forward to seeing that plan unfold and mostly we look forward to seeing you live in the shows it's just killing it I'm excited to play live. What's what's yeah. cool is like we've been doing like these Zoom lives and these like Instagram live shows and it's just like we don't like go too hard. It's just like the guitar and straight acoustic. Straight acoustic, which, which is, is cool because it's important to have be able to bust out a song at any time. Yeah, sure. Yeah. It's a superpower, man. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. Well, best of luck and everything. We'll keep watching. I probably won't watch on TikTok anymore. That's just not. No, nobody, that's, nobody wants to get into it. You're gonna on TikTok. I, you're gonna I don't watch your, it either. If you if you start getting into it, you'll find yourself stuck on there. No, 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 that's not gonna happen. All right, fellas. Well, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Stay safe. Stay out of fires. All right. Yes, sir.